So remember, they've been a little bit naughty and have forgot to define this. Okay. And by the way, can I just say, it's a cool question. I love it. It's like, oh, wow, this really happens. And I can work out exactly what's happening with the forces. They tell you um, that the wind is exerting that, exor exorting, exerting that force of 4.9 newtons. Okay? So 4.9 newtons are going that way. You also know, I think they tell you, what is it? Mass, mass one kilogram, right? One kilogram? Yeah. So you've got 9.8 newtons going that way. <laughs> So now all that remains is to say, well, because these guys are acting this way and the only thing counteracting, like making that not fly off, making it still, is this string, what do they even call it, a rope or whatever? Okay. These two must be equal and opposite just by virtue of the tension in this string. Okay. So therefore, I'm going to put it in um, some other colours because like I said, these diagrams get very busy very fast. You can see... Over here, right? Uh, I think you've got some names here. I think they've called that alpha. They call this alpha. So if that's alpha. Then what you can do is create around here. This diagram is simple enough. This diagram is simple enough that I'm going to put the um, I'm going to resolve the forces on the diagram rather than draw a separate one. You can see before, by the way, why I had to do it because like there's so many forces here. Vertical forces are going to be overlapping with each other, just confusing. But here, I've just got this guy going up. Sorry, that's vertical. Okay, which must be equal and opposite to this. And then you've got this guy acting this way, which must be equal and opposite to that. Okay, because they must balance out. So you can see, when you have a look at, well, where's alpha on this? Okay, well, here's alpha inside, right? It's the same angle of depression all the way along. What am I going to use to help me actually work out what alpha is? What information? Newtons. Okay, yeah, it's going to be the newtons, right? So you can see, you've got, um, going in this direction, there must be 4.9 newtons also going in that direction. Right, or I can draw it. Okay. And you've also got 9.8 going that way, like so. Okay. So therefore, um, probably what I would formally write is I'm going to write, again, a pair of equations that relate T and alpha to these two vectors. Okay. So I'm going to say T sine alpha, what's that? Come on, sine, that's vertical, right? Thank you, 9.8 newtons. In the same way, T cos alpha is going to be... Thank you. And so to get 10 alpha, that's what they're after, clearly all I need to do is divide 1 by 2. So 10 alpha is equal to 2, and that's where they get their angle from. Okay, now what do you think is the quickest path out of these two equations to get to t? Yeah, thank you. So because you've got a sine here and a cosine here, I don't want any alphas in this expression, right? So if this is 1 and 2, then I'm going to add the squares of these, right? So on the left-hand side, I'm going to get t squared sine squared plus t squared cos squared, right? Uh, and then over here, now, <laughs> this is a bit sneaky, because when you look, you're like, oh, the question has gone back to g. It's like, oh, why do they do that? Anyway, um, therefore, this is g and this is half g, right? So therefore, g squared and half g, so that's a plus, half g, all squared, does that make sense? Are you with me? So over here, what happens on the left-hand side? Don't skip that step. This is t squared outside of. And then I will let that equal to 1 in a second. This is g squared plus what? Thank you. So now I've got t squared 5 on 4 g squared. So now you take the square root, which gives you root 5 on 2 g. Okay. Because you defined it to be. Yes, that's exactly right. What would you do if you used tan inverse like two and then you made a triangle? Because yeah. I got four point yeah, nine. Can use Pythagoras. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, 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 You could do that too because like you're trying to find you're just trying to find this thing here. Yeah. So that that's fine. I prefer this way of doing it because it shows okay a student understands how to make these forces interact with each other and you're always going to get every single time you get the sine and you get the cosine. So if you are trying to put them back together, then just square out. In some senses, we have done the same thing because 
I'm doing Pythagoras just like you are. But if I write the answer as 4.9 root 3, would that be considered wrong? Um, I think that's okay. This particular question has been it's unusual in like leaving this one. not in terms of G and I think it's just convenient because like, oh, this is nice and neat versus, yeah. do you see what I mean? Um, so yeah, it's fine. Okay.